All his life, this fella, Kanzi, has been learning to speak English using a keyboard that matches pictures with words. Chalk. Crayon. Watermelon. Candy. Box. I suddenly realized this could be my chance to actually speak to a bonobo. Play yard. It's a whole new language. This is the kind of thing that Sue's been doing for over 25 years, and she's convinced it's the only way to do this kind of research. Culture is always passed on from one generation to the next in life. So if you're interested in whether or not apes can acquire human culture, you have to give them opportunity to have a human life. But we also, as you've seen, give them opportunity to have a, bo a bonobo life. These bonobos can do many human-like things, and they can do many bonobo-like things. <laughs> Well, I've never seen that before. I. Chase. Kanzi. Question. It was time to see if Kanzi would speak to me. Tell him he doesn't understand your article. Kanzi. Play yard. Yes. Kanzi, try to chase me. Yes. Chase me. It was an incredible moment. Thanks. I thought just, just, just... I can't believe I just talked to a bonobo and a bonobo talked to me and invited me to play. Come on. I'll race you. There. Now, clearly, yes. I know this is just anecdotal evidence. It's personal experience. But to me, my connection with Kanzi felt like an amazingly strong link. Chase. I was quite disappointed when I met um, some scientists recently because it really did seem like they, they just closed off and said, no, we've decided, we've categorised it, and, 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 and that's that. It's very easy for us to want to, to shut off our relationship to them and think we're extraordinarily different. Most of the studies are done on captive apes. They're shifted around from zoo to zoo. And you can imagine if you took two-year-old children and put them in a cage and sprayed it down every day and gave them chow and apples to eat and didn't raise them in a city, didn't raise them in a family, didn't get to go to Cub Scouts, didn't get to go to the circus, didn't get to go to the mall, they wouldn't become human. <laughs> you got me. Is he playing? Good. What Sue had said struck a chord with me. Perhaps if you can treat a bonobo as a person, they can become a person. Maybe this type of person is not born, but made. Now, I'm not saying they're members of the human race, but couldn't they be apes and people? Because after all, isn't that what we are? Race? Chase? I hope we're playing. <laughs> Listen, Sue, I had a brilliant time. Well, because you seemed to take to you, Danny. There was a certain bonding going on, wasn't there? There was I a certain he friendship. I likes your stance and your chest and yeah? the friendliness in your eyes. I am fairly manly yet friendly. <laughs> Uh -huh. I think I think we can agree on that. Um, listen, I, I had a brilliant time. I mean, I, you know, I've, obviously, I've been to Uganda and I've, I've met other chimps, and, and these bonobos, it's a whole other level. And well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm I, glad to hear it worked for you. It certainly did. It's convinced me even more that, you know, chimps and bonobos are kind of like people too. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that what you think? 
I think so. And what do you think will happen with Kanzi's offspring and his grandsons? They're going to get more and more people yeah, like. They will. Thanks, Sue. Thank you. See you soon. OK, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. So, my journey was at an end. I'd met my share of apes, I'd bonded with some of them, and I'd met my share of scientists, most of whom I didn't bond with. Apologies to them. Ultimately, I think all this is a question of potential. So maybe chimps aren't quite ready to be given the vote. But, you know, give them time, they're getting there. So should they be treated as if they're people too? Well, that's up to the chimps that got there first. Us.